If you're watching this video, you're probably asking yourself, who is Shadow Server? I just got a report from somebody who says, check out the Shadow Server data. Or somebody is advising you to go sign up for Shadow Server to get the daily data reports. My name is Barry Green. I'm a volunteer with the Shadow Server Foundation. I've been helping them out and working with them for many, many years. What we're going to be doing in this quick session is kind of walking through who the Shadow Server organization is because you'll you'll see more and more of them They're trying to get the service uh, the benefits out there to all the community because shadow server foundation provides services to the global internet community to help secure the internet help secure your network it doesn't cost you anything because reports are free so what we're going to be doing here is kind of walking through what shadow server is why it's unique why this some, some reports that you should be taken advantage of all right so let's start with the basics who and what is the shadow server, right? Why is it trusted by some of the top security professionals out on the internet today? So, Shadow Server Foundation, it's critical. It's a nonprofit organization. It's been around for close to 20 years now. They're low key. You can treat them like a cyber civil defense force. In other words, you know, their, their job and the, the people who work at the Shadow Server organization is, is building tools and capabilities to help them out. Organizations sponsored Shadow Server. They become part of the Shadow Server Alliance and they invest in them because these are organizations, instead of letting themselves get hit over and over and over again with the misgrant attacks, they want to go and turn it around. And Shadow Server is one of the tools that you can go out there and invest in the internet's more robust security capability. National Sea Search trusts it, law enforcement trusts it, lots of industry researchers trust it. So, this unparalleled combination of all of these alliances of people working together, it's built trust over the years. And we'll talk about that with, the, with trust with it. But what is Shadow Server providing to you? So let's look at the, one of the basic reports, right? You can, everybody here who's listening to this, you can take your organization, you can sign up and get daily reports. You can access either sent to you via email or you can access via API. And what those reports consist of is one, Shadow Server has one of the largest malware binary analysis platforms on the planet. Bigger than some of the other commercial ones out there. As a matter of fact, some of the commercial ones partner with Shadow Server services. They don't tell you that, but they keep it quiet. Shadow Server also has a range of different sinkholes. And what is a sinkhole? I take down a piece of malware and I got the IP address. I need to take the IP address and I need to like make it inaccessible to the internet. I put it into a sinkhole so I can find out all those infected bots. Shadow Server is one of the place organizations park these sinkholes that have to last for years and years and years because the malware is hard to clean up off the systems. Shadow Server goes out and does vulnerability notifications. If you have a vulnerability and needs to get out there, Shadow Server has access to thousands of network organizations to let them know that, hey, they have devices vulnerable in a network. Shadow Server works with a whole bunch of organizations to actually do botnet infiltration. They get inside there and they get data in there to say if the botnet is inside your network, you get a report. Say there's a botnet inside your network. Go clean it up. Shadow Server has one of the largest HoneyNet distributed systems all over the planet. People participate with it. People use it. This information goes together. They work with service providers, ISPs, cloud operators, and get data feeds coming in from them. They got global scans going on twice a day with IPv4, and then they also have a new algorithm to go out there and do v6. So you got v4 and v6. People thought v6 scanning was impossible. It is not. Shadow Server is doing it. They do a lot of takedown operations with law enforcement. So they work with law enforcement, and they go out there, and they, they take down the, the um, biscuit activities. They take down malware, phishing operations, spam operations, and, you know, SBI does the rest. You look at some of the law enforcement um, documents that submitted into courts and fine print right at the bottom says, thank you for Shadow Server for doing the takedown operation, right? So this is where they, they're low key to keep quiet in there. Lots of spam and phishing act activity out there to give do traps and warn you that, hey, there's a target against your organization. That's part of the reports. They work with malware analysis. In other words, when new malware comes out, Shadow Server works within the community who's pulling apart that malware to see what's going on with it. And then Shadow Server tries to contribute. All this information pulls together and it comes into a report for your network because you give to the, the Shadow Server you sign up for and says, here's my autonomous system, here's my IPs, here's my domain names. And then that, with that information, Shadow Server mines all this information and gives you a report, public benefit report. 
best attack surface tool on the planet. You don't need to go out there and buy attack surface reports from other companies because other companies cannot match what's going on here. The corporate side of attack surface does a fraction of what you see on here. Shadow Server has been doing this for over 20 years. Why aren't you signing up for it? All right, so that's what this is about. It's a, it's a public service. You know, one of the best ways to kind of see what's going on with it, sign up the Shadow Server's Twitter channel. You see reports on there or on the LinkedIn channel. So one of the things is Shadow Server over the years has been low key. Now they're trying to be more public. A video like this is trying to get more people to sign up to the capability and reports with it. They also put a dashboard together, right? In this particular case, um, the UK government funded Shadow Server. Please build a dashboard for the community because we need better visibility. This dashboard keeps on growing. More, uh, more uh, tools and more capability are being pulled into the dashboard. The entire world has access to this dashboard and it's being used to kind of get a quick survey. How bad is the problem? So now it's not Shodan anymore where you go out to, you know, have maybe have to pay for Shodan. Shadow Server is a public benefit service so you can get the information out of there. Now with this, it's interesting because one of the core um, supporters of Shadow Server, Craig Newmark, you know, he kind of, kind of coined the name. He says like, what you guys have been doing to cyber civil defense. And they said, oh, we are doing cyber civil defense, right? So you got to remember a lot of uh, everybody involved with Shadow Server are investigators and data geeks and analysis and hunters, right? Not really big marketing people, all right? So this is where, um, uh, you know, the... Uh, people like Craig Newmark walking in and, and kind of looking at it from a different perspective and go like, oh, oh, now I get it. This is what you guys do. Yes, support you. And this is what all around with the Shadow Server Alliance. So now let's talk about these daily reports that you should be subscribing to, right? So whenever me personally going out there working with networks, first thing I do is I make sure they got the Shadow Server report subscriptions set up. So we every day there's a notice, every day there's an update. These reports are free. This, and then anything that appears on the Shadow Server report is things that bad guys can see. So that's the key thing. If it appears on the, on the Shadow Server reports, it means the bad guys can also see it. That means these are the things you go out there and get fixed first, all right? Now, what it comes out with the data, each of these reports, there's like 137 reports. There's 100 reports that are active. There's several of the, you know, 30, 30 so reports, which are kind of like older reports, but the data still gets updated, right? There's better, better reports out there, all right? So, you know, this is where you go and, you know, do the, do the updates with the reports with it. Each one of the reports have details. Like, for instance, in this particular one, you know, with the SSH uh, risk, so you can see exactly what you need to do when you get a device out there and it gets gets out there. Now, one of the things that I do, one uh, like in one example, um, I would take my team as a security team, being a security leadership team, and the new teams, I would have them pull out the report from the day, kind of pick a few, go out there and analyze what's vulnerable, go out there, evaluate the risk, fix it, write a document, write up documentation so it doesn't get broken again. Next day, take the next one, and then to take the next one. It's a routine. Keep on. You don't have to. People who sign up to the reports right away, they get overwhelmed. They go like, "Wow, we got a lot of things exposed." That's okay. What you want to do is every day knock it down, knock it down, knock it down. So in this particular case with the simple network management protocol, you know, here's an example where in a company, all right, I kind of so anonymized it out there. This is where the risk comes in. You shouldn't be having simple network management protocol exposed to the internet to be scanned. Why? Because if it is, you get things like this. Oh, here's the version number of your switch. Oh, let me go look up in this particular case on Cisco. I'll go to Cisco and say, oh, that particular version is vulnerable to this. Now I know how to break into that switch. If I can break into that switch, I'm in the network. Shadow server report right there can save your network because it can up there and say, here's the devices that are open with, open with SNMP. Very easy to go out there and do a policy out there to fix it. Because all this information being public, you can actually, you know, here's more information with it. You can get the actual location where they're, where it's at, right? And if you don't fix it, it comes back and hits you. Like in this particular case with SNMP, SNMP came back around and then the mess screen said, oh, check this out. Let's use this as a, as a breaking point, you know? So, you know, this is like from 2017, there was an advisory put out there. And then... 2023, there's an advisory. It's happening again, right? So, so this is where it's really important to go out there and and take a, uh, 
a public benefit report like Shadow Server to use it to lock down your network. Uh, to make it easier also out there is which vulnerabilities, like I get this big report, so I work on first. Again, the dashboard. You go up to the dashboard. The dashboard has a couple of views out there so you can see what is at risk. So Shadow Server, because I see all the attacks from all the different networks, they go like, ooh, okay, here's the ones being exploited the most. There's the top list based off of exploitation. It also has a knob over there because CISA, United States, has this known exploitable vulnerability catalog. So if you're in the United States and CISA is saying, oh, go fix these first, here's a fix these first sort of list. So when they say fix these first, which of those are being exploited right now? Shadow Server is a dashboard to tell you which ones of the CISA list is being exploited right now. Go fix those next. Then you don't have CISA calling you up and say, how come you're not fixing this, All right? So the summary. Daily reports, it's free. Everybody who has an autonomous system, IP addresses, and domain names can sign up for it. It's delivered via email or an API. Like MSSPs, like if, you're, if, if, if your organization doesn't have security people and you have an MSSP taking care of you or a managed security vendor taking care of you, you can actually ask Shadow Server, can you have my MSSP get the reports on my behalf? And then an the MSSP helps you go out there and fix the things, right? Now, and I'll talk about this for a minute, Shadow Server is used only by you. Only you see it. Other organizations don't go out, go, go out there and get it. Shadow Server doesn't sell data at all, right? So now let's see, how do we sign up? So what you need is you go up there for Get Reports. You go to Shadow Server, Get Reports. Then you're going to say who you are, which organization you are, what's your email, what's your phone number, if you have a PGP key. Because they want to know who you are and are you authorized to actually get this data, right? So it's not, you know, they'll... Shadow Server will do a review process. What's your autonomous system numbers? If you're like a service provider, what's your customer's autonomous system numbers? What's your cider blocks, right? What's your domain names, right? If you're a national cert, then you list out the country because in, well, I'll explain in a minute, national certs actually get the country data, right? And then they'll go out there and do a trust exercise and make sure that you are authorized to do this, right? So, because it's the very particular with it. So the form looks like something like this, very simple form. You fill it in there, you dialogue with Shadow Server, and you get your reports, all right? Now, who gets the data? You get the data. And a national CSER gets the data, all right? So like, in, like, for instance, you don't want to have where you don't give Google the data of Microsoft. <laughs> don't want to do that. So B gets B's data, A gets A's data, C gets C's data, D gets D's data, right? And the, the Shadow Server has always been very particular. That's why they're trusted over the years. Many times when um, w you know the Shadow Server volunteers will go talk to organizations and say, hey, why don't you join the Alliance? And then immature organizations say, well, why don't you give me all your data? And Shadow Server says, no, thank you. And they walk on. And they go find somebody else who understands this is how the system works. This is how trust works. It's, you know, it's not set up that way, all right? So, this is kind of like a data, all this is kind of documented very well for like, here's how the privacy in terms protect the data. So it's very um, um, uh, particular to take care of that. Now, how do you get the data? You get emails every day and the emails has been like, you know, many organizations, that's how they process it. They put it through a script, they kind of mine it and they pull the information out and say, here's the things I need to work on today. Shadow Server also has an API. And the API is really cool because the API means you can integrate for all sorts of applications out there, all right? So with it, so like for instance, one particular tool, this is an open source tool created by the European certs called NQ, uh, Intel MQ, and it actually pulls in shadow server data sets into this. So you can get your MISP data, you can get shadow server data, you can get other data, you can pull it into one view. So you can actually work it through there. So this is a tool that you can try out. Many other commercial companies are, are pulling in the uh, shadow server API because it's there, it's sitting there. If, if my job is to go out there and help an organization secure themselves, why don't I just pull down the shadow server data? You know, it's, 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 it's an easy aspect of it. Other organizations, like for instance, my colleagues over at Akamai, the CERT team, they collect a whole bunch of different data sets and they have their own tools. So they just create a tool for a shadow server. So, you know, they, you know, they go to their tool and part of their uh, analysis to saying, how do we protect Akamai? They go click, 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 and shadow server is one of the data sets they have in there and they built their own tool. You can do the same thing, all right? So in summary, it's in your best interest to go out there and sign up, sign up for the report. So I hope you understand that Shadow Server is a trusted security organization. Here's a whole bunch of links, and I'll put these links into the description so you can go out there and find out more about it. 
And then if you have any questions, you can email me, you can email Shadow Server, you can contact at shadowserver.org. And we're looking forward to have you sign up and leverage it and use it. And maybe that some companies will like to support it by joining the Shadow Server Alliance.